until I, I end up getting eighth in the heat race. And I remember being on the start line. I had to ask the two mechanics next to me to put my button in. Yeah. Like <laughs> and they're like, where's your mechanic? I'm like, dude, I'm just here by myself chilling. So. <laughs> You can work as hard as you want, but I'm never going to be as good as Jet Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> that f is a freak. <laughs> I just f I met a gypsy. Something. So, but mum and dad were just like, you can't just not work. You've got to work. So I just ended up working for free for um konski and then that sort of snowballed the relationship with konski and sort of know like mates with him now but it's just funny how like i would have never at that stage thought i would get to be able to get to america it just took so long to get here i had to be like an adult and be able to save up and, yeah. and do all that and obviously i've had the support of my parents the whole way through because there was no possible way but i like my parents were really good with we're going to support you with whatever you do but to be able to get over here and race it was like well that's not something that's like uh, for me to be able to get here i had to save up the money yeah. to be able to spend it to set myself up like obviously my dad's still helping me now but that initial setup i don't think people realize how much it actually costs to like you come over here and you've got nothing like yeah you don't have the van you don't have like a ramp to even put your bike in the van all that stuff so that initial setup and i think mal ross sort of was talking about it coming over this year he's sort of set up now so that he can come back next year yeah and yeah crap yeah because yeah. it, it is so like it is a lot of money to when you initially come over and oh like the yeah living situation yeah it's just you've got to find somewhere to live and all that stuff and it, everything costs money whereas when you're back home you've sort of got the support of parents you can always sort of go back and live there and yeah you got like a like safety that. net yeah whereas when you're just over here by yourself you're like well shit fucking gotta figure this out somehow it's so cool that you just had that desire to race in america for so long and you just did you just made it made it happen well, the thing, like, like I said, like earlier, like the, the whole, like I know COVID was horrible for everyone and that, but for me it was like the best thing because I, I was I had gotten hurt in the end of twenty eighteen. I I'd, in twenty in the end of twenty seventeen I had to have this sh like my right shoulder reconstructed, and then it, I came back and it took forever. Like I don't know if there was nerve a problem or something, and it it took forever. So I. I missed even the start of Supercross in 2018 in Australia and I ended up coming back for one event and I broke my left shoulder really badly. So I was at that point just, I'm just done. I can't do it anymore. I'm just too hurt and all that. So while I was kind of like de like depressor on that, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to get some tattoos. So I always had wanted this one dude in America to do the tattoos. So I just called up one day and just called up the studio that he was working at and, uh, like booked appointments and i was still i was just in australia i'm like well i'll book these appointments and at the time i think it was nine months out because he was like quite a popular to like tattooist and it kind of just i st had started writing just before then but it, it made me sort of come over here because i had to sort of have an excuse to come to america because i had the van sitting here for a couple of years and yeah and I had a little bit of stuff over here so the tattoos was almost just an excuse to come over and i, I had bought a bike off a friend cheap and started riding over here and then like and i did all the tattoo appointments or whatever got all that done but it was more just like an excuse to come over and ride again over here because i thought at that point the racing was done because i'd been hurt for so long and then i sort of realized like shit i i can probably do this i got my girlfriend at the time and then i, I sort of had that excuse to come back after supercross in 2019 and then it sort of just snowballed like i wasn't ready in 2020 to race supercross but then the COVID stuff hit and it actually gave me time to buy a race bike off your eve that they were selling and then set up for those COVID races that were at the end of the year in salt lake oh so yeah yeah then that snowballed to like my visa was expiring and with COVID in australia the consulate was shut so, so yeah I you got, just got stuck almost i couldn't leave america because then i would have been screwed and wouldn't be able to get back because i couldn't do my visa interview in australia so i got an extension and just stayed for 2021 and then 2022 
So I've just got to build up this like program and then meet people and sort of be able to race here. But that was never really the plan. Like I always wanted to do that, but just the way it's happened that yeah. it's like worked out so perfectly to be able to stay here and race. Whereas I think if COVID and that hadn't happened, I would have tried to race and then come back and race the Supercross in Australia. And then you sort of get stuck there yeah. with that because you can't organize racing in two places. And so for me, the COVID stuff just sort of set myself up here and sort of getting stuck. And, and also I didn't want to go home because I didn't want to get stuck in hotel quarantine and yeah, all yeah. that sort of stuff, which would have been horrible. Yeah. It's like, uh, it was the one thing that I struggled with when I was there is cause I was there for like, I mean, there was periods of time where I had like a visa for a long time, but there was also those periods where I didn't and you'd have to go home and back and forth and like you just kind of can't get anything going when you when you're not in the one place for the one time and that and then like it's funny on the flip side for me COVID was when the podcast really started to pop off because I couldn't go anywhere like I literally just sat in the studio for two years and made shit happen but it makes so much sense that that was probably the thing that really helped you the most well yeah because like even the like you would understand with the visa and that to come home when i popped my shoulder out at parlor last year i that was the excuse to well i can't ride for a bit i'll come home and sort my visa out finally and that that whole process still took four months yeah so or three and a half months or whatever it was so for me like being from not america like the whole there's that whole other side of it that makes it really hard as well like each time you do a visa it's like four grand or or whatever you have to pay and then that whole process takes time and like that if you don't have i I often wonder how the lawrence brothers i'm sure with the backing they've got and stuff like that they've got the visas and all that but it's it is quite tough to have to organize everything on that side of it as well as the racing side of it to come over here we are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.